restaurants, bro. Well, there was one, one bitch, a couple of, one bitch was meant to play four grand into a account of ten days ago. hasn't done it, so I need to dump it again. And welcome to the Gladiators of Sport, show number 14, Mr. P. Thank you very much, sir, Mr. Philip Means there, the managing director of Alan Mance Moulders, Footscray, Melton, Bacchus, Mars, Mance Mania, has got a hold of me here, Beaver. Get out to Alan Mance Moulders and get yourself a fine deal. Here we are, back on show number 14 here today on the Gladiators of Sport, YouTube edition number 14. Hope you've been enjoying our previous editions. And we've got a massive panel here for you today with a very special guest. And I'll uh, leave him uh, to the end. I'll start off to my left here, uh, the, the number one man in uh, soccer recruitment in Victoria, possibly Australia. He's a scout. He uh, follows St Kilda Football Club. He loves his football, his soccer, his international basketball and international sport per se. His name is Mr Peter Kakotas. How are you, sir? Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Very good, very good. Thank you very Happy much. Happy to be here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very good. And to my right... On uh, SEN 1116, it's a very, very own man who puts together shows such as Initially Speaking, The Wonder Years, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. He's on the Sunday morning recovery with Tony Shebecki and my good self. He is none other than Mr. Troy Santuck. How are you, Troy? Very good, Stephen. Great to be here, mate. And uh, really looking forward to uh, today's episode of The Gladiators of Sport. And also today we have with us, of course, our musical director, of course, Mr. Philip Hill, our corporate balladeer. He is uh, putting doing a massive job. We've got a couple of songs for you today. Hotel California's got some new lyrics, and we finish off, of course, with uh, Camille on with a few new lyrics there, with uh, the Collingwood president, of course, floating around the Mediterranean. But without further ado, the number one man at 1116 SEN, he's controlled the nighttime radio. Thanks, Peaky, and uh, uh, great to be here. Great to be here, Peaky, oh, and, oh, sorry, and with, uh, we're with the great Farney here, of course, which is uh, quite an honour. Uh, th oh, thank you very much, Mr. Philip Hill uh, there. The number one man at nighttime radio. 1116 SEN uh, also uh, does a lot of uh, work around the place, the boundary umpire in the VAFA and uh, assists uh, charities and uh, other uh, sporting organisations along the way, uh, speaking engagements and uh, as I said the number one man, night time 1116 SEN Melbourne's home of sport, Mr Mark Fine, Mark Fine Field umpire <laughs> field, field, field umpire, sorry Mark I made a mistake in the introduction. So it looks like, like somebody who'd run around and throw a ball over my head backwards. <laughs> well, no, I must admit that was that's a job that you you don't have to do. You're the field. In umpire. fact, I've umpired with you, and I was the field umpire. So why would you think I was? I'm a boundary umpire. Well, I made an error there, and uh, that was a bit of a shame. Alex and Nancy, our two uh, their mascots, have joined the program, and we're great to see them here. Nancy is from India. Alex from Switzerland, I think, or is it Sweden? Just on, get them mixed just up. on introductions, Switzerland. Switzerland. I'm, I'm from Elstonwick. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Australia. Just on introductions, how did you rate uh, Peggy's introduction to the show? A Peaky Blinder. Oh, thank you. Excellent. No doubt about that. Well, Mark, um, no doubt I'd, I'd imagine you've come well prepared uh, with the, to discuss issues. Uh, we've got, of course, we start off the program with a welter of issues. We also uh, then have an interlude where we have a musical break of four or five minutes when Mr Philip Hill, our uh, quality guitarist there, comes in with uh, Hotel California and then we discuss the matches for the weekend. That's how the, the, and, the format goes. and the beautiful fair here at uh, Yellow Door, I'd like to thank you for shouting me the fish and chips. <laughs> well, or the most expensive item on the menu, as I also, prefer to call it. From my from my heart too, Peaky, the Eggs Benedict uh, yeah. with some five grains porridge. That's magnificent. Right. Well, Thank you. Well, I'm hoping that by the time we finish the show that the kitchen won't be closed, Mark, and you'll be able to uh, fight yourself, oh, enjoy been, your top yeah, quality It's been ordered and uh, prepared as we speak oh, and built yeah. accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no doubt I knew it was going to cost me something here today. Well, look, probably before I start the major issues, I think the one... I last night, the one issue I'd want to kick off, I was at the St Kilda Members Forum. Now, I know that uh, a lot of... The people watching at this point in time, other people you can see wearing what's the the top, of course. Uh, there was a bit mentioned today in the age about the development or the, the about to be developed by Rabin uh, to be taking place, and the people out there wondering what else was discussed at the at the forum last night. Five hundred members were invited, uh, in particular, to be at that meeting, and I was fortunate enough to get an invitation. Now, the, the, dem the, the demolition work is about to take place at the ground in the next few months, Mark and Troy and Peter. Uh, and they're hoping that the new works will begin at the end of the year. Now, $30 million is the figure that we're looking at. 
$24 million is being raised by state and local government and independent donators. Now, they... Now, I did note that the current yeah. acting sports minister is Mr Philip Deladarkis. Yeah. I play cricket with Phil Deladarkis. Yeah. So there's some pool there. Is that what we're trying Barracks to do? Barracks Builder. Okay. Barracks for the Saints. Excellent. And despite yeah. having a name that you would have thought would have been very Greek, Phil Deladarkis, he's in fact... A Red Sea pedestrian, played for Ajax Cricket Club, and oh, okay. I'm one of many Jewish supporters at St Kilda. Red Sea pedestrian, Red Sea pedestrian. The Jews, when they were released from oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, sorry, Egypt, yeah, yeah. you know how it was part. It was part of yes. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I didn't. Call so it he's Jewish, not there. Greek, yeah. with a name like that. Yeah, a Greek Jew. Yeah. Oh, Greek. They were yeah, they're Salonica. Yeah, exactly. That's where they were. Yeah. Salonica. Yeah. And what are your thoughts, Fanny, on, on the uh, the upgrade going back home? Oh, are you for or against it? it? Yeah, oh, I'm wonderful. absolutely for well, it. The reason, the reason St Kilda went to Seaford is because there was a a, um, a difficult member of council on the Kingston Council, a, a constant contrary Problem. voice to yep. any moves to redevelop that ground as Correct. a football yep. complex. And that... That voice made it impossible. That voice is no longer there, and we can move forward. We can move forward, but uh, on top of that, even back in the early 2000s when Brian Waldron was CEO, they tried to redevelop where the bowling club was and get what was touted down there was going to be like a league club set up on the corner, massive, with uh, international guests or national guests there, entertainment, you have your poker machines, your dining restaurants, the whole shebang. But in the, but end, in the end, that bowling club, you know, they found a lost tribe of Bushmen there. Did they? Well, did you see how overgrown it was in the fields? Yeah. <laughs> but it's, they still play bowls there regularly, though. I mean, on, on quality Sharon's law, the don't they? Too. No, it's completely overgrown. It, it it's, is. So not being used at all. Yeah. Well, that's three species of moth, Very two similar. snakes, and a lizard that had never before been well, seen. Well, so, so this is when you get frustrated. Again, have you? <laughs> this is when you get frustrated with the uh, misuse or unused territory, especially around a football ground. This is where local councils need to come to terms with the fact. AFL football is the biggest game in the country and they still have, and it's our national game and some of them still won't come to terms like the Windy Hill situation. They won't come to terms with the reality of the situation and say, What's the reality enough, at Windy Hill? What, what, what tradition is there to have a bowling a bowling club, say Windy Hill or Moorabbin or wherever it might be? Is there a big tradition with that? It's a square piece of lawn uh, with uh, uh, gutters in it and whatever. And I'm not going to de de demean the sport, but it's not really... It's a pretty lazy sport at the best of times anyway. It's a skill sport. I know that hobby. When do you redeveloped? It's used as a football ground. What's your problem? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's used that, but... Essendon had to move to Tullamarine to get out yeah. there because they couldn't build their development at Windy Hill. They got kicked out by the bowling club and the council. Well, they got the, kicked out. Well, it's located next to a, a primary school. The bowling club? The football ground. At Tullamarine. It's next at to Essendon, the airport. Windy Hill. No, Windy, Windy Hill. Hill shares a, a gate with a primary school. We can't a primary have that. School, we couldn't have had those that. shenanigans going on over the last few years yeah. next to a primary and, and school. And what are your thoughts, oh, are your thoughts oh, also, oh, boys? Oh. It's not just exclusive to St Kilda. The Southern Football Netball League, yeah. the Southern Metro Junior Football League, the AFL Victoria Regional Office and the Sandringham Dragons. They'll all be we'll share, closets. We'll, we'll all share the <laughs> oval. Yeah. Well, that's the reason why the council yeah. obviously bought into it, because uh, that's how councils work and think. It's not all about just the elite sport. It's about everyone uh, benefiting in the community. So yeah. they've, they've tied it in nicely. They have tied it in They've tied it in nicely, and this will just... Come at the perfect time as uh, as our list, uh, being a St Kilda man, uh, starts hitting a, a reasonable window. So great facilities, good team. It's going to be exciting times for St Kilda yeah. fans. Yeah, no. Sport. yeah, no doubt about that. <laughs> it's uh, always better when you don't pay for any too. No, he's enjoying that. It's a beautiful <laughs> here at Yellow Door, I might say, ladies and gentlemen. This fine eatery in Elbert Park, uh, beautiful food. Uh, family and dog friendly also and uh, area at the back of where we're sitting here where children family you can, and dog friendly family and dog friendly the free Wi-Fi as well if you're electronically minded and need to do some business slightly warmer than last week slightly warmer than last week and also a chalkboard at the back or fence that the, the, the children while you're having a coffee or are you having a meal and they want to go for cirque they can uh, get the chalk out it's on the board where you do some of your best work over there oh yeah, yeah thank you Troy very much there. 
Yeah, that's right. Still no. chalked that up. Yeah, yeah, well, he has chalked that up, but there's also uh, crayons and paper for those also who are that uh, way minded. So uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful entry. It's got a lot of uh, pluses, and uh, Mark Fine at the moment is uh, having the magnificent fish uh, with the uh, rocket salad and chips, and he's enjoying himself immensely there. Now, amongst the other things, the new work start, the, the members have to raise $6 million now. This is the sticking point here, and they have to raise that money. Now, St Kilda haven't been very good members, haven't been very good in the past number of years in putting money in. And in fact, a lot of footy members at clubs are a bit recalcitrant when it comes to when the hat goes around to put money in. But if you want... St Kilda back in Marambin and you want the governments to spend 24 million with the independent donors, your members, and we've got 38,000 memberships nearly up to, I think, the second highest level ever coming in. You've got to put some money in, Peter. They've got to put some dough in whether they like it or not. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, look, the big hitters have obviously put some money in, but there's no doubt that uh, they're going to need to spread their head around and um, we'll be there for 10,000. <laughs> Fine, he's in for ten. Well, there you go. <laughs> track, 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 track. Pinky, you'll be track up for track. about five thousand. Well, as long as everybody, you know how it works. You get thirty-eight thousand. Divide, divide that into six million. I haven't got a calculator with me, but what does that? Doesn't come it to? doesn't work that way? Philip Mance has got a doesn't calculator. Work. He's going to work it out. I think Phil was putting his hand up for five. <laughs> 30, thirty-eight thousand divided by, divided by six million divided by thirty. It's about, it's about $100 a head, isn't it? You know, you, know, you know it doesn't work that way. You know. well, it, 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 it might not, but it should work that way. I mean, everybody should kick in. We're meant to be members of a team. You know, we're, we're but if you support. lead the way with 50000 that's a great start. Mm. Troy, no one has to lead the way. No one has to lead. We all have to be equal and tip in together. No one has to you know, bankrupt themselves to, so they can no. get to bragging rights in some sort of... You know, uh, you know, what do they call it? Uh, I won't oh. name that thing, but you know what I'm talking about? That swinging competition they talk about crudely elsewhere. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I'm sure Lindsay uh, Fox will come in. No, no, well, we don't use that language uh, here, Mark. Oh, right. Did you say a swinging contest? Uh, yeah, you know that what that I'm talking about. the one where you throw the keys in the fishbowl? Well, one of those sorts of situations, okay. you know? So St Kilda got a women's team next year. The, the uh, CEO mentioned that we, they will definitely have a women's team in the comp next year. We're pretty confident of that. New Zealand's our second market, which Auckland oh, are building. Still. Yes, Auckland are building a Test cricket over, which will be used for AFL football as well. That's what they're aiming so at. So we, we've got no chance with Tassie. The kangaroos. Well, Tassie and, looks like we're blown. Tassie. Kangaroos and Hawthorne have got that wrapped we're, up. Yeah, we're blown, Tassie, and, and that all happened. Uh, yeah, thanks back to at Grant Thomas. Well, yeah, well, you said it, not me, but uh, uh, that's uh, there were some problems back then. And we've already, uh, young Joe Thomas, that young New Zealand recruit, he's been playing some phenomenal football. They said last night. Uh, in the development league, I think it must have been. So Just interested in St Kilda's record in New Zealand. We haven't won one yet. Oh, OK. Yeah. Draw, Irrelevant, Troy. We've had poor teams no. at that point in time Did and developing good, teams. Good, uh, what's your name? We've only lost in New Zealand. Yeah, we've yeah, lost, what, three games there and we've picked up $1.5 million in income. And what were the attendances like? You know, like? our record in New Zealand Irrelevant is again. about as good as the Rainbow Warriors. Okay, let me make a point about this, and I'll come to the I'll come to a real hot conclusion. I don't care about how many members they get there. It'd be nice to get ten thousand, five thousand. I don't care who doesn't or doesn't turn up, as long as a government or an independent corporation tips in half a million dollars, and the AFL helps and tips in two hundred thousand or whatever it might be. If they could tip in as well to get us there to be the first international team playing AFL football overseas, and we get to take that money out and pay off consolidated debt. That's what I'm happy with. That's what I believe to be the case. Thank you very much. That's uh, and, and, and that's what I call good business sense. Players love playing at Eddie Head. They, the, the coach told us last night, and so did the CEO. Um, not a good place to do business, but a great place to watch the game, as we all know. Uh, they've got programs developing leaders. They've got a 91% retention rate on members at this point in time, which is good, because it's no good growing your membership base if you've got past members not rejoining up. They have to do it. Attendance is market 20% up. Where only the Western Bulldogs are the only team in front of us with um, a record uh, record increasing uh, attendance base for this year. We've gone up four to five thousand, yeah, five five thousand members. I'm, I'm covering a lot of issues here, and we've got a, a studio now, Junction Studio. Where None you can, of them intelligently. Well, well, no, no. I'm just saying, just saying quickly. The Junction. There's a community connection with media at the Junction Studio where players and members of the community, where we can go down there. You can do a video with a play player. Oh wow. <laughs> At the, the, the Junction Studio, you can have a talk to a player on a video. It's called the Junction Studio, and it's a community-based studio for you to converse with players, officials, By members. By video. 
yeah, whatever you want to do down there. He said he's highly excited about Carlisle and Freeman coming through. He believes they'll sort Freeman's in out. And Carlisle at the moment is working for a sponsor, putting in some great work, and has been put his nose to the grindstone. So they're I just a few they're in overseas. Yeah. I believe there are 17 other teams in this league. I'm, I'm only I know. I just uh, because we had a forum last night, Troy. I'm just relating this, and I'll can just finish talk, off with this. Can we, can we talk about yeah. Fremantle? Yeah, we will talk about Fremantle in a minute. They, 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 no worries about that. Club, the club was appalled at the comment Stanley Frawley made in that incident from the other day. He mentioned that that was mentioned again last night. Contrast to St Kilda values, and Frawley was heavily embarrassed. And his wife and one of his daughters was in the room when he apologised to all the staff and the players, and uh, to end that matter on a very good note for the club and for. Uh, Danny Frawley, so all has been sorted. So, well, I think you now, covered that well, Peaky. I appreciate that. So, well done. Um, when's, when's the 15 minutes on Zach Dawson coming up? <laughs> Finies. He can't wait. Well, he's going to finish his meal quicker. From Antle? Well, well they're, they're going swimmingly at the they moment. Lost. lost on the last week, yeah, but they won. They got beaten by Collingwood in the in the wet at the at the MCG. I went to the game. Yeah, he did, but you know, you know what it's like when he talks Ross Lyon. No, I said they'd win eight out of twenty-two. I said they'd you know, win. I, I don't want to encourage him. Let's just get on the. Yeah, that's okay. Don't worry about that. They'll be all right now. They've, they've, We've got they've, a bit of a loud one running on this. On on the position three o. Yeah, what? How many more wins? Four's the chop out. Four's the chop out. They've got to get five for you to pay, and if they win five and five plus. You I pay, and, and if, if they they're three or, three or less, less, you pay. pay. Me pay. Yeah, yeah, two yeah. meals at Hungry Jacks, one at the Flower Drum. Have we got no. that equation no. right, Mike? No. no, Flower no. Drum. I've flower drum. been through the menu there. Now, I've flower had a Drum. Really <laughs> <laughs> Successor. Now, boys. They okay. should have the expensive green lip abalone ready just for the end of September. Abalone, okay. Well, let's. Hand oh. harvested. Why would you be thinking in advance of that? Uh, to that? Well, he's pretty confident. Um, I like my that's green why. Abalone. You've got to book it a month in advance. It's very expensive. I don't need a bologna. Yeah. But no, but you talk be, plenty be, of it. Be, you don't need to eat it. Just pay for it. <laughs> uh, now, there's been a lot of criticism of the mid-season break, as we know. But uh, anyone thought about asking the players? Everyone's been carrying on, saying, oh, they don't need it. Sports science should be able to get them going 22 weeks in a row. And also, how would commentators know? Now, here I am. I, I could become part of that milieu, but I refuse to, because you know what? I'm not an expert. I'm not a sports scientist, I'm not a medical man or a doctor. And I don't, why don't you ask the players? And they asked Ted Richards. Ted Richards said, we're screaming for not one buy, but two buys. That's what Ted Richards says. The players are the ones putting on the show, Mark. They're the ones putting in the effort and toil and the sweat. Oh, you want somebody else's opinion? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, you're allowed to I'm give it. Shocked. You're allowed to give it if you finish your meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're still going. Troy, would you like I to think, step in? The buy is being poorly handled. Poorly handled? Because well, he shouldn't have started Thursday football on a bye weekend. It's mm. great things too thin. As far as I'm concerned, I think let's have a week off. Everybody has a week off. A week off? Everybody we has make a... It, what? Make it a week where we celebrate local footy. All the players go back to their local club, clubs. They used to do that. Mm. And teams take it in turn. One year they'll host, one year they'll be away. They'll be Every club will put on the carnivals and festivals mm -hmm. and it'll be an enormous boon for local football. Yep, you think Geelong might have suffered a bit? They had only the week, they had six days or seven days break. St Kilda had 13 days, it might have helped a bit. Huh? But coming out a bit fresh yeah, it would St Kilda. Have also helped if they scored on one occasion in their last eight entries into 50. That could have helped them too. Well, St Kilda's defence was resolute. Detroit, you, you were happy with I'm happy with the, I don't mind the six games a week, that doesn't bother me. You know. At the end of the day, I've got a big problem with that, but I'd go to the players do, about organising. Do you that. like? Excuse me. Do you like the uh, Thursday night game? Because the last two uh, weeks we've had the well, Thursday night, which is cutting to your time. Well, yeah, you like well, that. that's okay. But you know, at the end of the day, look, what do the players say? I mean, when you get these sort of thing happening, you see what they say. I, mean, I want to know what they say at the beginning of the day. Yeah, at the start, before they put the fixture together. Well, you keep saying at the end of the day. Well, at the start of the day. Sorry, I should say. But I need to be asked halfway through the day. <laughs> Peter, like let's at the get end of the updates. <laughs> I like uh, Finey's uh, uh, yeah. local football. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic yeah. initiative. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, it stops all the in the inequalities of uh, you know everyone has a break at the same time, um, and you know there's no doubt they need to be uh, connecting more to second tier uh, football. I think it's a fantastic so think initiative. I think it'll work really well. Even, they should even an elitist pill like you, Pete, you should be able to find a local team to connect with and go and watch. Maybe Olds of Variants? Olds of Variants, uh, uh, more Brighton. than likely, Sandringham. Mm. 
Sandring and the VFL, mm-hmm. uh, Port Melbourne in point of fact, because I've got Port Melbourne connections as well now. Uh, you know, uh, you know, well, yeah, I could do that. I could do that. And that might be helpful for some young kids. Players go, old yeah. Zavarians will be, will be, um, they'll, they'll be inundated with league footballers because all footballers yes. will be encouraged to go back yeah. to their clubs. They do. They'll have Xavier Richards, Ted Richards. Ted Richards, Alex Johnson, yes. uh, Daniel Hanabry, um, Tim Golds. Um, and there's a couple of others I've left out. Uh, there's, there's a plethora of them at the moment because the... the uh, Joe Watson. Joe Watson was another one. Uh, they, uh, the, the footy uh, department down there is just massive, you know, and they've got a magnificent training facility. Luke, uh, Luke Ball went to... Luke uh, Ball, yes. No, he, he's, he gave player. it away. He didn't no, go back. He said, I'm, I'm, he was cooked when he finished. Cooked. There's others. There's a, there's a couple of others. Can yeah, Matthew Ball is finest captain of the Gulls of Irians, I think. His oh, there brother. You hmm. There you go. So, um, yeah, I, I think the, uh, the buy works... One buy, one middle of the year, but I don't like the I don't like the end of season buy. Oh, I think that's good. I think that will stop a lot of problems. There's no, you know, there'll be no resting in that last round. They can't do it. Players can't have two weeks off, mm. and it does for every team make equal of a situation that was getting a bit messy. Do you think yeah. it interferes with continuity? Oh, look, you know what? It's the end of the season for ten teams. Those fans disengage, and for the eight teams that are left, you're not going to do anything but look forward to the finals. So it's actually yeah. probably a there's yeah. more lack of continuity now than at the end of the year. They jettison ten lots of fans who start worrying about the draft and trade. And it'd be a good week to have the Brownlow medal in. And you know, a couple of things. I reckon they should yeah. have the Brownlow medal and the Aust- all Australian in that week and have a bit of a celebration of celebration, celebrating players, and then get on with the business. Now we've got, got birds some wildlife in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alfred Hitchcock's through. just arrived. Yeah. With Tippy <laughs> Hedren well, and Rod you, Taylor. You said it was animal friendly. Yeah, well, 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 hey, hey, well he's dog. Yeah, no, 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 no. It was dog friendly, but it's also <laughs> pigeon and seagull friendly down here as well, or, or a yeah. hybrid version of uh, of both of those. Uh, and different, yeti uh, friendly. You've made uh, just different uh, Hitchcock pursuits. You're supposed to make a cameo, Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a Hitchcock good area. Good evening, good evening. Say, wouldn't they? Okay, okay, good welcome. Welcome. Did you notice during the week Tom Petroro, one of the player managers no. from Tri, Stribe, Stride, sorry? Stride. Stride, I think it was. Okay. Uh, wants loans of players to other clubs you know, during the no, current loan, season. No. That is probably the... I don't want to be too critical of Tom, before. but that's one of the worst suggestions. It has happened. Loans. Loans? It's happened in April Chris Mitchell? Football. Yeah. Chris Mitchell, was, was he loaned John or Scarlett. cleared mid-season? It happened. John, John Scarlett, Scarlett was initially loaned by Geelong to South Melbourne. He chose to stay at South Melbourne. And stayed there. He did. It was a loan arrangement. A loan? Yeah. And they got... But what, what, what do your registration papers say at VFL House? Uh, there was an yeah. agreement between well, Geelong and South Melbourne well, that... Yeah, well, you've you got to clear the player. For Peaky. South for the rest of the year, yeah. and Geelong would take him back, but it was agreed that he could stay. Loans what's your, are a what, big part what's your of prob- Yeah, mate, that's, uh, just, that's just normal. No, 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 a lot of, What's in, your problem with in, loans? In, in game, you can't you, get your head around it all? You can't get rid of all our tribalism in our game about players. I haven't got a problem with... I'm a big fan. I've been screaming for mid-season draft ever since they knocked it out three years ago. draft is... Unacceptable, untenable. Mid-season trade, yes. A draft of what players? You can't oh, sorry. Ruin Mid-season other trade. So clubs going from clubs. If you're on a list, well, this is what I probably should yeah, clarify. Trade. Because yeah. drafts, you can't go take but you players from other teams you can, you can, in other clubs. Absolutely. You can drop a player Absolutely off your list. Not. Say, for instance, you want Will Minson in your no, team. No, I don't. No, no. But I'm just saying. So, so I will you. not be party. Say, Geelong wants Will Minson, right? They wouldn't. Okay. Well, they're, they're they've got enough tools. They've got depth of Say. Hawthorne, for instance. No, they're pretty right too. Uh, they right. <laughs> well, Say Gold Coast. Gold Coast. Well, they're not, the, they're not the finals, right? Pick a finals team that needs a ruckman. Who needs a ruckman? Let's say... Uh, pick one for me. The Let's, Western Bulldogs. Let's Western say, Bulldogs need a ruckman. Well, well he's, that's well done. <laughs> Let's that say... Serve, that, they actually certainly that, do. That, that claims me up. That sort of comment. Back. Adelaide would take Will Minson as backup Adelaide. because currently yeah. they're only backup to Sam Jacobs. The two rookies, one of whom was recruited from... Mooney Valley by the name of O'Reilly or Riley somebody and their only other backup to Sam Jacobs is a player who has played one AFL game in eight seasons Mm -hmm. his name's Luke Loudon and by my calculations he'll play his 100th game in 2,815 from the current rate well okay that situation so they want that player 
and say we want to draft him so they knock a player off their list. I don't have to give a player to that club. They don't have to do a trade. They don't have but to they knock a player, knock a player, off, player, player off and put a player on. No, they don't have to knock a player off their list. What did, what did we have before they stopped it? They had a mid-season draft up until about 1995, 94. But they could trade future picks if they don't want to trade a player. Yeah, okay, you can do that in a mid-season draft. It's a big part of the, the world table. game, Peter, isn't it? Yeah, from, it's, from it's, your, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's a massive part of the world game. I mean, and you know, players uh, sometimes um, don't have the opportunity. Um, other players in, in the list uh, come up and take their spot and, um, and there's a requirement from another club and it's wheeling and dealing. I guess at the end of the day, you've got to decide how much wheeling and dealing you want in the game. But it's pretty, co- obviously, it's a, it's, a, it's a standard practice in the world game. And, um, you know, players at the end of the day want opportunities to play. So you won't have many arguments from the players, let me tell you. Aaron Moy will be loaned out to another club. He expects that to happen. Adam. Aaron Moy. Aaron Moy. Yeah, Adam he just got Moy. bought. He just got purchased. What club's he gone to, Peaky? Well, I don't Aaron, know. It's I'm a bit of signing in Australian football. I've heard of this boy. Yeah. I haven't heard of this boy, Moy. No, you've got to follow the game to actually hear Aaron about Moy. it. Aaron Moy. Yeah. Adam He's just signed at Manchester City. If you say it one more time, Aaron, Aaron Moy. Aaron. Aaron, sorry. Aaron Moy, sorry. He's just been purchased by the, by, mother, my, by okay. the mother club, Manchester City. But no okay, doubt, so he'll, no yeah. doubt he'll be loaned out because he's nowhere near that level. Yeah, but that's... that's but he'll be loaned out. In, in, yeah. in international soccer, that's that's an endemic issue. That's something that's built into your uh, your DNA in soccer. That's built into it. So what do you got against Trades, it? Loans, what, do you, what do you got against loans? Well, loans. What I've got against loans is you can, you you can manipulate a, a premiership out of it. That's what you could do. But you don't want to lose a player. Well, the AFL so do that anyway. Out, okay. You could loan out a Billy yeah. Lawyer. Right, let's say I'm... But you're only allowed to loan yeah. it out to a lower team. Okay, let's say I'm... I'm, I'm There's okay. no precedent for loaning out okay. to teams above you. I, I'm Adelaide. I'd say, right, I want to borrow Nick Revolt. I want to borrow... Uh, uh, I want to borrow... Uh, um, uh, uh, Gary Ablett Jr. I Ryan want to borrow Ryan this, board. this... Hang on. ...and end up with five so, players, right? I told you... And win Peaky. yourself a premiership and say, oh, we're Peaky. premiers. Huh? Stephen, there's still salary cap conditions. Yeah, there are conditions, yeah. And you can't loan players out to teams that are above you. A loan is to give in a player system. in any logical we're, system. We're, we're, a loan, yeah. you loan players out to give them an opportunity to play. Mm-hmm. So logically, you couldn't do it to teams. Okay, okay. Well, you're talking about a logical system at the moment. We haven't had even thought about the terms and conditions. We just had a. Well, I've just given you a term and a condition. You, 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 you have. You've, I'd you've, rather you've, hear the illogical system. Yeah. You, 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 you put that on the table. Well, how about how about how about, how about how about how about the either? argument? How about the argument where, you know, you. you as a member, you've, you're uh, invested in the team, you want it to do well, and all of a sudden you've got a massive deficiency where a, a, a number of players, a certain type of players, all go down. Mm-hmm. And as a St Kilda supporter, 1997, you've got two Ruckman go down, yeah. and you It'd go in the grand final point. with Brett Cook. But I'm saying, yeah. what's... Uh, and why, why can't you have the ability to go and grab Take a player yeah. mid-season and be able to put your season back on track, if you, especially if you're going to lose... A couple of ruckmen, where you, you know, unless yeah, you unless you're Grant yeah. Thomas, you actually believe. Just to play devil's advocate, the so, reason is because list management is a, is a yeah. skill, and it's to be done every year once. Yeah. But, but that's yeah. one part of the argument. Oh. The, the other side of the argument is that it would um, give once is not enough. Give players an opportunity to reignite their careers and mm-hmm. give teams that are lower down yeah. on the ladder a quicker rebuild by getting rid of players that they think have currency in the short-term market for a future pick. So it could aid in the equalisation of competition and it could prolong careers of players who just out of circumstance don't play the game anymore. They're the pros and the cons of this management is part of the game. Yeah, I've heard the list management. Once. It's been, been very strong as far as yeah. I'm concerned. To, to manage a list for all, the, for all the AFL clubs, I think it's an art form. And personally, I... I'm very happy with the status quo. But in terms of players, you'll get some great stories. You've got certain players that coaches have got it. They've already made their mind up about a player. They put the cue in the rack when they when they're talking. You know, when they actually think of the player, they go, "Right, well, he's gone." They put a uh, you know, they put a red yeah, a red texture through, through his yeah. through, through his, his name. name. Um, but someone else, some other coach, believes in him. You're going to see some great stories if it happens where someone gets a second chance. He's playing for his life. He knows he's got eight weeks to save his career and someone comes and does something remarkable. I think that's the other side of it. You're going to see some great stories if they allow that system. The key would be maintaining the integrity of the salary cap. So if you bring a player on that is going to cost you $150,000 for the remainder of the year, you need to remove somebody. Not injured, not on an injury list. That's not fair. 
No. You need no. to no, but move is, an active player. player. Yeah. In the but is that not what the rookie Not if he's already been delisted for a rookie. No, but if yeah. there's someone on the list, then you list them. just And they want to get rid of someone. And they found, say, Travis Clark. Collingwood, say, Buckley's put a line through him and Collingwood put a line through him. and you he. mean, say... No, he's playing this week. Yeah, he's playing this week, but say if they put a line through him for the future for next year and they want to get rid of him now, he's on whatever he's on. I think it's well, huge. No one had taken him. 350,000, but if he was... Would, he any, of the, would any of the teams take him? Geelong or whoever it might be. Well, still, that's, not, that's actually talks of football rather than... Yeah. Um, rather than... Hypotheticals. Are there any teams that would take Cloak in the eight? In the eight at the moment? Uh, would Hawthorne, Hawthorne have a look no, at him? No, they've got a structure that's... They, they're not going to drop Sicily or O'Brien for Cloak. Um, maybe the three of them down there? Maybe the Bulldogs. Yeah, yeah the Bulldogs would probably dog, do the one. Bulldogs would be probably, a team. Probably, but only a maybe. Problems? But they'd, they'd probably roll well, the dice. Why wouldn't Hawthorne think about playing with three of them down there? Because they already have Bruce and Gunston. They've got, a, well, they've got Gunston, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Cloak's not playing well. Um, not he about was the bombers. Last week. Probably, he was well, probably doggies. Loaded. He was yeah. reasonable. Who was um, doggies? Uh, it's sorry, just on his Essendon? reasonable yep. Yep. game. Yep. You're a big Fremantle man. Who was yep. their best player? Who was Fremantle's best player? Yeah. Well, Collins was. Thank you. Excellent. But well, end they, story. He wasn't on him the whole time. He was on him enough. He, he wasn't was on, on him enough. He was on him seventy thirty. Dawson and he interchanged a couple of times. Don't on worry. Cox. Collins was their best player. Played on Cloak. Cloak got 14, 12 touches or something. Three, two of which three in the last quarter. And also Dawson. Dawson. Got a bright future, Collins. Hasn't Mind he? you, yeah. Dawson's got 85 Years champion data well. points. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> Which is his highest number of champion data points, I think, ever yeah. in that game the other night. Dawson. Also, oh. he was he had a, and he didn't get. I'm surprised he didn't raise it at the match review panel. But Mason Cox was on all fours at one stage there, and the umpire from 20 minutes away was yelling at Dawson, saying, that's, "What?" He's saying Dawson laid hands on. He's saying Dawson laid hands on Cox. I'm not saying again. It, I'm not saying. I'm not saying anything. But of course, it, da- Dawson's <laughs> pest control. This one. <laughs> All I could see was Dawson and the umpire. Dawson was standing with his hands and hips. Cox was on the ground on all fours. And the umpire from over 20 metres away was yelling at him saying, what's going on? Or words of that effect. And Dawson was saying, oh, probably words the effect of, I don't know. Is there a ban on your on your shows, Finey? Of Peaky, yes. No, mentioning Zach, the Zach yeah, there's a, well, there's a Well, let's move on. There's yeah. a certain rock band that's not allowed to be named anyway, at all, actually. Anyway, you got him in. Got yeah, you got it. Yeah. Move on. Now, we're, boys, let me games. This, we've got problems there. What can we talk about before you do that? Footy? What about the soccer, uh, the soccer European Cup? Now, we've got uh, Peter here. Know, He's the expert European of Championships. European Championships. Yeah, we're going to court yeah, well, at we're finals. To the, uh, so, what are we up to finals, now? And obviously, last night, Portugal won on penalties again. It's a very consistent nation, Portugal. They always seem to get in the last four or eight, but um, uh, they don't seem to go all the way. But they've got through again. They've been playing, um, they? Sorry? Beat Poland. They beat Poland um, on penalties. Yeah. So, um, so who's, l- Poland who, who's are left? Very good side with obviously Lewandowski, a champion striker, and they, they did well, the Polish. Played some good football, but who's unfortunately. Who's the most famous striker, Poland? Of all time? Yeah. Probably uh, Boniek? No, Lech Valenza. He took them. Who? Took <laughs> the head of Solidarity, the union. That yeah, Lech Valenza. He was the Prime they Minister. S- <laughs> no, no. Well, oh, he, he, yeah. you know, they went out on strike, all the. Um, yeah. Well, the, oh, no, he was, he was the a legend. Yeah. He was a superstar. The Solid, Solidarność. Illuminary. The greatest striker of all time in Polish history. <laughs> and there, there you, go. And there but, you but, have it. <laughs> but seriously, the greatest striker you said was... Oh, look, uh, probably for mine would be Boniek. He yes. played at Juventus. Yeah, he was a champion. They yeah, had a great, great striker um, he came who to got Melbourne killed once. in a car crash. Um, yes. Yeah, I can't remember his name. What was his name? Yeah. Um, it was Boniek and... The Poles had some great teams in Daniel, the 70s Daniel. and 80s. Yeah. Dana? Yes. Yes. Yeah. He was a champion. Yeah. They had some great teams in the 70s and 80s. They were fantastic football teams. And well, obviously, in 92, they, um, oh. they took our pants down and got to the... Um, in the Olympic uh, 92, they got to the final. Yeah. Um, Always a very polished outfit, Coco. Yeah. Yeah. Very disciplined. Uh, uh, um, you know, th- that sort of region, they, they play very... Strategic, tactical, disciplined football. So they've always been so, a good nation. So, Coco, who's left? Uh, what's left? Wales to play Belgium. So we got um, two of the star players. I mean, uh, you know, Gareth Bale. Bale. Bale's been sensational uh, for Wales, and they're, they're a fairy tale um, run at the moment. They've um, so as a minnow, and Belgium have got some stars there, and Hazard's been killing it. And um, Lukaku's they're, they're, been very good. Yeah, they've got yeah. they've got a lot of stars. They yeah. should get through that match. So well, who's that? Wales, Wales or win? Teams. Who Wales got? More than just bail, they've got some strike power up there. And, um, the winner of that game will beat Portugal. Yeah, I, um, 
I don't think Portugal would be playing that well, but they just seem no, to be getting I think through. Yeah. But no doubt the and feel then, good story, Coco. Sorry? Of the whole tournament. Is Wales. Germany. So Iceland. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll get to that. Yeah. The Germans play the Italians on the next game. Yeah. Uh, the Intra two power two Intra power nations. So Japan two of the two of the most good. successful uh, European nations. So the Italians have played some fantastic football this tournament, but Germans are just Germans. They're um they're an unbelievable football uh nation and uh, I think the winner of that's going to go a long way to winning the, the whole tournament they're just two power nations so and then uh, France Iceland your team Marzanis, yeah. um, um, there's more volcanoes uh, than yes, professional footballers yeah, unfortunately this story about Iceland being a rank outsider and a ridiculously impossible winner against England is a fit up it is an absolute fit up they qualified by beating Holland twice home and away yeah. they've got a very proud football in history and They've got a very steady and stable team. They, not every Europe, not every nation in the world embraces national football. In England, the passion is far greater for club football, as yep. you see, with, with club support. And it's been what has bedeviled France at times and Spain until the last decade. Yeah. We're too obsessed with club football. Now, it's a good England, point. Yep. England have not had the same team on the pitch in the last 10 years more than yep. three times. Iceland's team in the last seven years, this team, 13 players have made up their team for the last seven years of international football. 13 players? They are a well-drilled, deep down, hard at it, used to each other combination that had a very good record coming into this tournament. That's the nature of modern football today. The minnows now, the way the game is, it's not like the old days. You've got teams now very, very... Discipline, yeah. tactical, they know how to defend. Um, I was speaking to a few of the, the Greek international players and they came and they, they lost to Faroe Islands twice, twice, which was a disgrace. But you know, they were saying that you know they you don't turn up second. you don't turn up, you you're gonna you're gonna be embarrassed. And it's and you'll see now it's becoming more common because teams now their 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 structures are stro- so strong and the game being a low scoring game, high position, low scoring game, all you need is one one um, free kick, one corner, you get ahead 1 0, you shut shop and you can well, win Grace a game. Well, Greece won Euro 2004, was it? They did. Um, you know, and, and, the, that, and last year they won the EPL because without them. Which one? They won the EPL last year. Leicester Who did? would never have won the EPL. Oh, without Leicester. Greece. Oh, Leicester. Well, well, look. They wouldn't have got Ranieri if you know, not what, for what Greece's what pe- terrible performance. Yeah, correct. That's, that's true. That's, actually, <laughs> <we went laughs> that's a good, sliding door moment. That's a good it? point. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the point about Greece is, you know, they, they played a defensive uh, um, uh, counter-attacking game, but they didn't lose an international game for two years. Uh, same sort of thing that yeah, what, what yeah. Mark was talking about, Iceland. 16 games yeah, in international well football. Yeah. Very good football team. There's a gr- famous saying, I think it's out of the Guardian in 2004, was it, when they won it? 2004. Yeah. The saying, the, the quote was, has a rank underdog ever been so universally despised to win a tournament because Greece were the underdogs mm. and normally people love the underdogs but they just didn't sc- it's actually not it's actually not true that they didn't score i think in qualifying they had a really a 2-1 or 3-1 win over a good team look that it was, it was in the quarters they won on penalties and then they won 1-0 in the semi and then that great header in the final well the, the, yeah, the point is i'm a little bit biased but we did, the, the Greeks didn't win any any games uh, on the penalties they won in normal no. time no, they won they the 1-0 they in the, the final semi final they beat france didn't they um, win at the quarterfinal? No, maybe quarterfinal, they oh, beat... Oh, went to extra time. Went to extra yeah, extra time. time. But they, there were no penalty victories. But they actually scored... They beat the home nation twice. They scored... A, in, the, in the round robin, they were one of the more, better scoring teams. Yeah. So it's they, a bit unfair. So it was a little bit unfair. It's a little bit... But, uh, yeah, look, they if they weren't going to go out and play against the Czechs. So, oh, they would have got killed if they went out. They played a very structured... Played to their strengths and they won. Was the FFA Cup draw this week? Yes. Do you know who South Melbourne... Got South Melbourne's not in. Oh, they, oh, oh, they got knocked out, actually. I South Bentley, that. Bentley, Bentley knocked Green's us out. Bentley Green's knocked you out. And they're playing the, in Metro the Stars. Cup, correct. One. That's correct. Green yeah. Gully, uh, they've got a berth. Gully got a berth. Um, Heidelberg. My friend Arthur Pappas, he is the coach there. He's doing a good job. Heidelberg are in. He- Heidelberg are uh, not in. They lost to Gully. So no, Heidelberg. So who did I interview the other night? No, sorry. I, I, I should know. Should Hume. Um, no, St. What, um, Melbourne Knights are in. Melbourne Knights are in, Hume are in, Bentley Greens are in, um, so they're doing well. Uh, the Melbourne teams have done well the, for the hot last three yeah, years. Yeah, it's a great tournament. Yeah, it's look, uh, final, it's got, it has the nature of an FA Cup. 
romance. Minnows so. versus you know big boys, and yeah. um, everyone lo- everyone loves that romance. Yeah. Yeah. Both the teams teams that made finals have been happy to be there. The A League teams. All right. Yeah, uh, now, that's quick. the most tranquil seven minutes I've had on. Uh, yeah. Now on these I want to talk about the Olympics, or do yeah, you yeah, do yeah, something? Olympics. Olympics yes. One quick thing before the Olympics. Yeah. Apparently, some young Australian boy uh, who's been in college in America has been drafted in the NFL. Yeah. Adam Gotsis. Yes, Gotsis. Is from um, uh, Oakley, is he, or from? No, he's not from Oakley. Uh, a lot of Greeks are from Oakley, but mm-hmm. he's not. He's. Uh, I think he's from uh, Abbotsford. Abbotsford, sorry. He's so, done. he's. Uh, he went to Q High School. He Q got High picked. Uh, pick number sixty-four in the draft. So it's been That's a massive. Near Xavier. Yeah. Massive. Yeah, he went he's to Close-ish. He's not from Saint. No, but it's near Xavier. I think he's had a knee reconstruction. No, don't let him. Don't let him claim that, please. No, we don't want him. He's to not claim one of ours, unfortunately. It. But ben, ben Simmons got a pick number one in the NBA draft. So massive um, the week for the Aussies. Uh, yeah, in the top ten pick in the draft. Yeah. yeah. Now was, uh, I'd like uh, just a quick comment on the Olympics. Michael Diamond, yes, well, last night, uh, yeah. unfortunately, was left out. Well, she had, to, had no choice. They had to suspend him, given the. the uh, uh, the ridiculous criticisms they delivered towards Kyrgios, they had no option but to um, delete Diamond from the equation. In fact, I think the uh, Shooters Association took him out beforehand. They did. Mm. But he kept shaking his head because... Well, I'm just saying two, two Greek Australians have been thrown out. Michael, so. was, was, has, has he been to six Olympics? Diamond? In yeah. 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 No, something it's like that. Yeah. But, uh, look, I'm, I'm all against knee-jerk reactions and overreactions, but yeah. when you're a shooter and you've got a drinking problem, and you drive and drink and shoot and do it all oh. in a public manner. It's hard, to, it's, hard to, it's, mm-hmm. it's hard to say, with, yeah, with a lot of ammo and some yeah. bad intentions, it's hard to say you should be going to the Olympics. Well, so how many gold does that cost? She set the standard. Well, at least. Gold well, so we've, know, got the number, the we've got the world number one in the trap shooting. Without him? Yeah, the world number one is being mentored by Sam Longinides. Is that the young kid, 17-year-old? Yeah, he's, yeah. Well, he's not that young, oh, he's, he's young. Well, there's another guy who reckon that he's going to take the place of Michael Diamond, who's 17, Yeah, and he's supposed to be very good as well. Yeah. I've always yeah. felt, if, if I was third, two, two go for each shooting discipline, yeah. if I was third, I know what I'd be doing. And shooting one or two. <laughs> well, I've got a gun. We, we've lost our so, top athlete. Uh, Sally Pearson. Sally yeah. Pearson's yeah. out. She's injured. Jason Day's what, not what, happened, what happened to Sally? And that was the reaction. Sally <laughs> tore a, uh, a uh, I think an Achilles problem this time. I think she's got the serious Achilles problem. It's uh, you know, no problems here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a family friendly uh, show here. We've got tear an Achilles members of the audience who are all age groups. Yes. She's not, young to the not so young. She's not happy with the show. No, no, no worries at all. <laughs> they're, they're, they're fine. So, I'm not, I'm and, not and certain. The musical I'm, director I'm, assisting there too. Fine, he's got a theory on, on this. Sally sorry, Pearson. sorry. She's you're, pulled uh, out with a hamstring tear. Uh, it's Achilles' problem this time as well, I think. Hamstring tear this week. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hamstring tear. I don't, I don't believe she's, she tore her hamstring. Oh, wow. Oh. I think she just. I know she, she was injured leading up. She's just not been able to. She can't get herself right. She's not she's been able to get right. She does not want to go to Brazil to not make the final. You know, it's. Well, that's fair enough. She's pulled the ripcord. I, I reckon that if she she said in an interview, she said I can't win or get placed or can't win a medal. In my current condition, Correct. Uh, going there, that so she could go the, there before this yeah. injury. All right. Well, let's put it this way: if she goes there, does further damage, finishes, doesn't make the final or even the quarters or whatever they get up to semis. Gets what's marked. the point? What's the Gets point? Held up a gunpoint. Yeah, well, well that, that's that's virus. Virus. who was the deal or It'll the deal? It would be a bad week. It would be a very deals? bad week. I yeah. see Michael Phelps is qualified. Yeah, he has. Yes, for, he's the greatest male swimmer in the history of Olympics to swim in five. When it comes up to that. But, uh, Why King, not just the greatest the male swimmer of all time? Well, it could well be that as well, because he was in your top ten and he was in mine. I think of top I think ten in the male sports and all sports men and women of all time. But uh, Peter, the question I've got on: Why in the hell? Why are we going to Rio? Why did they get this in the first place? Their police are currently protesting on the street and say we haven't got enough weapons or enough enough money to eat and to protect everybody. They're pro- the police are protesting. And that place is a mess. Why are we going to Rio? Why are we going to Qatar for the World Cup? I mean, I don't know. Well, we're going to. Uh, there's been a serious mistake, mate. Oh. Well, I don't know whether that's the same. They've got, they've got, they've got more security than you can buy a stick in Qatar. They'll make. They've got ev- army everyone was carrying on about. We said this last week about South Af- South Africa and the World Cup. There'll be the safest. There'll be that much police and 
the whole world will be yeah. watching. Security, be, there'll, be, there'll be no, no, I'm talking rare. No, there won't there'll, be. There'll be no issues because they got them being paid, Peter. Sorry. There's insufficient security, there's insufficient police. We're going to have massive problems there. There's going to be some trouble. They're Peter going... Allen enjoyed his time there. Well, we're at Qatar. The first oh, South American <laughs> Olympic Games. <laughs> yeah, and I wouldn't have allowed them to have it. In fact, I would have uh, pulled the pin on this probably a couple of years ago. Would you? Yeah, yep. And we've got to, what we've got to do is. is you know, is there have you ever been there? You know, there have been, been there. I haven't been there. there. there have been I'm, I'm there I've been there five times. There have been I'm horror be stories there. before every Olympics in Sydney. Beijing was supposed to be a disaster. Athens was not ready. Exactly. Athens wasn't ready. Beijing, a disaster. London, there was turmoil. Yep. And now, Rio, you are simply... Now we've, we've, we've you're xen- you're xenophobic. That you know nothing about. Yeah. Correct. We've you're already xenophobic. Had a we've had a been, the closest you've been to Brazil up and shot point are, your, your, into are your hairless calves. <laughs> <laughs> been to the hey, USA before. Hey, but hey. I'll just say this. You won't go to parts We've already had a, an Olympian, Thank a Paralympian over there already who's been upended in the street. And mugged. Mugged in the mugged street in the with street. a gun pointed at their stomach or face by a recalcitrant Mate. individual who's starving hungry. And can't get a meal or a we dollar. Have, we have carjackings here in Melbourne. We've got, yeah, we have carjackings yeah, we here. Do. Yeah, we do have that. Should we call off the AFL <laughs> grand final this year? <laughs> Send it up to a safe no, no, station? No, but over there, what, no, what well, about, why not? Well, our police aren't on the street protesting saying we don't have any bullets and no money. Well, they, they need lawyers, that, guns and money. Peaky, there's, there's parts need. of Melbourne. There's parts of Melbourne you won't go to. You think unsafe. So you, you're, you're not the. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a little bit xenophobic. I'm a safety first individual. You're xenophobic. I'm a safety first individual. This needs... program could be more quietly produced in an in an elevator at the at the um, <laughs> the Maya, Maya Emporium Centre in yeah. Maya Emporium in the city. Uh, yeah. The Maya Cafeteria. Ground yeah. floor. Yeah. Here we go. Ground yeah. floor auxiliary. <laughs> We just had stationary the, and leather goods going yeah, up. Yeah, this is this is a this is a family and, and consumer friendly environment here, yes. and it includes people such as the the, the laundry man coming. We've had more traffic than punt road <laughs> in the last uh, ten. I minutes. don't know about a mid season draft, but can you close that door because I don't like the draft that's coming through yeah, there. There's a bit of a Peter will sort that out. We've got a few issues here, but ladies and gentlemen, we're we're up to it. And now uh, uh, Jason Day, the golfers are pulling out. In fact, I think there's only. There's hardly anyone in the top ten Adam who's committed. Scott, he's, not he's out. He's Jordan, out. Spieth, Spieth is Spieth's there. undecided, or is no, he? No, he's will be there. Is he? The no, top ten won't Spieth be there. Will be there. Spieth will be there. Spieth will be there. Because well, he's sponsored go, by Coca-Cola, and uh, they they've are demanded he's heavily be there. involved in the Olympics. I think Rory McIlroy is not attending. Rory's out. Rory's out. I, again, what's this I don't Zika, even know what's why. Why is the golf there? It shouldn't be there. Well, the Zika virus is one. Day's not taking his pregnant wife there. We know that. Now, the Zika virus, what the hell is that? I've never heard of it. What does that well, do? Yes, that? you are up with the latest world world health <laughs> health crises, but it's a virus that attacks the unborn child in the womb, re- okay. resulting in macrocephalia, which is oh. an enlarged skull, water oh. on the brain, and unfortunately, a very poor prognosis, both whilst alive and for the short life of the child. Okay, and you're telling me why aren't these people going to the Olympic Games in Rio? So we've got no police, no security, Zika viruses... And people being mugged on the street. Well, the vast majority of pullouts have been in golf, where obviously the sport has and not captured tension, yeah. the imagination of the players. In fact, in women's golf, yeah, where yeah. you would have thought All there'd right. be more pullouts because yeah. they are females, there yeah. has been none. Okay. So men's golf simply has it too good to yeah. be a part of the Olympics. Yeah, well, Peaky, the Peaky, did, didn't we, the didn't we just have a World Cup there just recently? Highly successful World yeah, Cup. Yeah, a, a huge, uh, which is the yeah. biggest event. Did with all, with all due respect to the Olympics, the biggest world yeah, okay, yeah, sporting event okay. in the world, yeah, right? The most relevant sporting event in yeah, the world, if problems? you talk to the rest of the world. Now, look, did you see anything? No, did the world collapse? No, did anything the, the, happen? So what are you shock, worried about? Shocking recession at the moment. They had the recession been going on for a while. Um, Would you mate, consider yourself an alarmist? No, I don't. I Would don't you consider, consider yourself consider or, well or an elitist? Well <laughs> <laughs> Would you consider yourself au okay au- au- with current medical prices? Uh, no, I'm not uh, at the moment. Don't doubt about that. But if I was an Olympian, right? No, you, say I was where would you hold the Olympics? Say, was I, say I was say, okay, we'll to go to London. We'll just go to London every time. This is me, right? Or Melbourne. I would then look up the list of retired Australian um, Special Forces fighters from Afghanistan, Iraq and everywhere. I say a dozen of them, right? And like, say, the, boys, like, like the Expendables. Yeah, the Expendables, yeah. right? I'd get the Expendables, uh, uh, people like that. I'd pay them oh, 10 mate, grand each. Stop watching Rambo uh, movies, ten, ten, I love Rambo. Seriously. Start to shoot them more. A dozen. Watch, he's watched too many I'm Rambo plane, movies. Make some room on the plane for my security boys, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, because they're going to be with me everywhere. If I'm a Trust swimmer, me, when the I go w- to the pool, they're lighting up the pool, right? They're what happens if the there's pool. seven sports on a given night? They're playing 
basketball, there's swimming. No, there's... no, this is just my own personal security. This how wealthy? Just, how wealthy are you as a as a well, uh, Olympic sports person? No, no, but I'll just say what well, if you're I'll a member of the what if you're a member of the Australian Cox Eight who earns no money from rowing and is on a grant? Oh, I've got thirty thousand I've got to source the so funds. Pinky, so Pinky, I've got to source the funds. What are you going to take with you? I've got to get some nulla, nulla. some some gunslingers from elsewhere who might just so you know, can't, so Troy, can't do it from on the, the Commonwealth should be hosting. Phil, World can you get us back well, to track? Troy, in fact, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. What movie would you do? Yeah, something on the head. Do you that? Well, I believe that the only cities that I should said, have I the said, Olympic I said, games. I said, I said flippantly. I yeah. said only countries from the Commonwealth should be hosting World well, not, not, Tour, no, not and the, he said exactly. No, not, not, the, not just the Commonwealth. Melbourne, Sydney. Athens, oh, uh, Paris, oh, you throw yeah, London, you put Athens in because London, Los Angeles, yeah. uh, New Curry York. Curry in favour. We're third uh, world, mate. Europe, that's seven. Tokyo? And that's, Tokyo's eight. What about Auckland? You, Auckland? You've got a soft spot no, they had a Commonwealth Soul? Games, Soul? Soul? Was he killed a player? Soul, though, yeah, that's pretty safe. Soul, although I'm a bit Perth, worried about the North Korean Perth, because Ross Lyons is there. Are you worried about the North Koreans? Montreal. Montreal's another. There's Geneva. Geneva, have they got the facilities? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm a big fan of Easter Oslo? Island. Oslo? Oslo, <laughs> maybe a bit cold there. Copenhagen? Copenhagen, I don't know. I don't know the facilities. I don't know what their position is. But the first 10 or oh. 11 we know. What about Easter there. Island, people? All they have to do is regurgitate that around yeah. every sort of 40 years. Okay. I think you'd rotate right? Right? rather than vomit well, right, right. them around. <laughs> 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 we'll rotate them every Regurgitate. every four years. So that's that covers forty four years. That's half oh, okay. a lifetime, oh, right? There you go. Have we got a problem with just, that? Well, they just compete against each how other. About, how about Juarez, world. Mexico? Would you hold them there? Mexico, no way, Juarez. no way, no way. Mexico Juarez. off the map. Juarez, the most glorious city uh, in the world. Why don't we just go wouldn't Switzerland? Even, oh, wouldn't oh, even oh. send a, a, yes, an official would, down there to you, put a stump in the ground. You want an Olympics with no drug testing? Juarez is your place. That's another Can we get on to the games, too, please? I'm not for, and this is where people get me wrong. I'm not about just open Olympic Games to open drugs. The main substances get banned, but I want to see a moratorium between athletes, doctors, officials, everybody to sort out the drug issue. Once so you time. can send your stock. Yep, exactly. I'll give you an example, send, Stephen. Send. Professor Savalescu, he's got the right idea from Oxford. He's, he's my number one. Who's playing this man. week? Listen, no, we've got music now. We'll play the music anyway. at the end. Yeah, Let's do quickly do the teams, and yeah. then he'll do the okay. team. It right. for your dissertation on that. I've got a song for you. I've got a song for Peaky. Yeah, go. What is it? Do you remember a show called Up Pompeii? Up Pompeii with Frankie Howard. He used yeah. to watch some of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite yeah. funny. A funny thing happened to Peaky on the way to the forum. <laughs> no decorum. <laughs> up. Up. How did it go? Up. Pompeii, hey. up Pompeii. Hey. Who were the characters in that? Um, Frankie Howard uh, was the main guy, and I, I can't remember something, his associates, but they were funny. Okay. There was something, he's, you know, there was a tribune in it. There was a couple of tribunes, uh, but I can't remember. It's too long ago. Right, who's the first game? Are we going to do a song? No, we can do the first game. Yeah. Do the first yeah. game, then we'll do the song. All right, we'll do the uh, team, shall we? We're yeah, going out of order today. So you think we'll win that one, Peaky? Uh, well, hang on. Let's, we, we start from tonight, mate. We don't go out of order. You're going out of order at the moment. But no, the no, West no. Coast, he's asking wasn't... about Essendon and West Coast. No, Who's going to win? As that just happened. That was de rigueur. Essendon are in a, they're in a black hole they can't get out of at the moment. It's just... Uh, it's going to be like that for the rest of the year. It's actually an African American holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no, no, that's it. No, that's it. That's it. That's it. They are. They're in, a, they're in a shocking place. Who's playing tonight, Stephen? Port Adelaide v Richmond. This is at the Adelaide Oval, right? Tonight at 7.15. Uh, Port Adelaide, dollar thirty-three. Richmond, three forty. Uh, in for Port, Homps, Schultz, and Mitchell. Uh, out for Port, uh, Howard's got a knee, Gray, and Stewart. That's Paul Stewart. And uh, in for Richmond, Ivan Maddox or Maddox, Sam depending Gray, on the Sam Gray, is it? Yes. And Kay Mitchell. You, and of course, uh, <laughs> out for Richmond is Hampson, young Hampson, who's been very athletic of late. He's out with a million young Townsend's gone for Richmond. So uh, we'll start, go around like this. Peter, you kick off. Port's, uh, Port will win at home. Port at home, you reckon? Yeah. By oh, how much, Three. Pete? Four goals. Three. Where's, what reasons? I don't rate Richmond. You don't rate them? No. Okay, at all? I only you? like one player. That's, what, the mark. They, That's it. Okay, okay. That's Peak. fair enough. Uh, Troy? I'll go Troy and then yeah, I'll go Mark very, and then Yeah, very me. close game, this one. It's a 50-50 game, but I'm uh, actually tipping Port Adelaide at home by uh, two goals. Really? Okay. Mark? Putting a lot of faith in Port Adelaide, who are dodgy. Go, uh, Mark? I'm tipping Richmond. Yep. They've, um, they're playing all right. They're winning some games. Their midfield's going good. Dustin Martin, I reckon, is ahead in the Brownlow. We'll, we'll win the Brownlow. 
Port Adelaide have got more cheats than the Russian Athletic Federation. They've just got too many players that don't try, that yeah. don't pull their finger, finger out. And they, I don't like them. Well. They've rushed Schultz back into the team. And yeah. I prefer the look of the Tigers. Yeah, they're not for mine. Port yeah. Adelaide sucked in too often by that mob. Uh, Phil, I agree with Mark here. I, I see Port Adelaide as a miserable outfit, miserable administration, m- miserable <laughs> situation all around. You say you don't The, the like biggest him. moaners and whinges and groaners going around, but that's an administrative uh, side of things. Richmond have won five of six or whatever it is at this point in time, or four of five in the last five weeks, and they will win this game because they know they absolutely have to if they want to keep any... They're not going to make the finals, so Richmond but they've by got to keep their supporters happy. Richmond. Richmond probably by five goals because, to me, yeah. I agree with Mark. They've got uh, Port Adelaide. They've got a number of players who just don't put in 100% the whole time. Okay. So that's that game. That's tonight. Uh, don't worry about home ground advantage. Don't, don't mean uh, anything. Yeah, do worry. I think you, they I grow think another you should. leg at home. Yeah, Thank yeah, you yeah, very yeah, much. Yeah, well, they're going to trip over and their because they're, just not, they're not good enough. Massive. They're quite simply not good enough. In well, fact, I was same. surprised. If you wish, I looked at champion data, uh, 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 super coach points or whatever. Chad Wingard, we were comparing Chad Wingard with Bonham Pelly and Billings. Bonham Pelly gets 90 points, Billings 80 on average. You and I were doing this, and Wingard gets 60. He does a lot of brilliant stuff, but how many times does he get the ball? That's the question mark. Gold Coast are playing St Kilda tomorrow at uh, Metricon up there in probably you'd expect reasonable conditions. In comes Martin, College Asney and uh, Archie. Out goes Mackenzie, Grant and Hallahan. And in for St Kilda, Tommy Lee gets another chance in the back line. They need a bit of height. Bloney comes back and Webster's got a hamstring and right a shoulder, Peter. Well, obviously St Kilda's red hot at the moment after but uh, not, the last two victories against Carlton and Geelong. And um, it was a pleasure to see... Uh, Stephen J. Peake do the war yeah. dance after the, the win. Singing the song. If you ever want to see uh, someone convulsing, get onto his Facebook page uh, and watch Go him. on his Facebook page. It's an amazing. Uh, oh, but I got um, excited. yeah, you got excited. It was great to see. But look, um, I think Gold Coast Tall Timber uh, uh, up front is going to be um, a concern for St Kilda. It's always been our, um, you know, Achilles' heel. Um, you know, um, with tall uh, quality uh, forwards. But uh, and I think uh, Gold Coast are favourites. But I'd like to think that um, after beating Geelong, St Kilda can um, can roll Gold Coast uh, and do the business. Yeah, I concur with you, Pete. Uh, Love the Saints last week against the Cats. Just pressure from uh, the first siren to the last the last quarter siren. Absolutely magnificent. Seb Ross gone up another level. Uh, Armitage tough. You've got, you know. Rewalt was, he's just playing out of his skin at the age of 30, 33, 34. 33. 33. And uh, Jack Stephen, what a player. Uh, BNF Finey, I reckon, for the Saints uh, this year, he's going beautifully. So the and Saints got three, three in a row for Jack Stevens. So, uh, yeah, I reckon it'll be tighter than most people think. So two to three goals, the Saints. Marco? Um, I can't see some killed winning it. Look. Gold Coast are busting for a win, 10 in a row, but over the last two or three weeks they've put their best team back together and they actually had three more decent players and excuse two guys that were probably the last two players picked last week and it sort of showed Hallahan and Grant from other clubs. You feel better when they were in the team than now that they're not in the team. Uh, they've got their good team back together, the one that won the first three. They're back at home. They are just busting for a win. Ablett was great last week, so you've got Ablett back mentally and physically right. You've got yeah. a team with both key forwards and key backs playing. You've got all the experienced guys there. Harbrow, Ruskatelli, Malchewski, and there's probably one more. They're... Oh, Mays. Mays are huge. Yeah, I mean, they've got May and Thompson down back. I know Thompson made a couple of mistakes last yeah. week, but he can play. And then you've can got play, yeah. Tom Lynch, just monster, St Kilda's oh. defence. Delaney's been brave, but Lynch is... He takes the ball at, at, at its apex, and he runs long and hard. He will kill Delaney if there's any service. He just will beat him. Uh, mm-hmm. The question is, St Kilda's got three good key forwards themselves. Their midfield might measure up OK, but, you know, it was ten games in a row that was lost by Freo before they come good. Ten games and St Kilda once lost in a row before beating Freo a couple of years ago. This team's busting for a win. They'll win comfortably. And I tell you who's got, will be an exciting player in years to come. Two metre Peter. Peter Wright. He really he clunks a Yeah, mark, I'm saying so. there's more height down there. There's, yeah, oh, yeah. there's just too much height for that St Kilda back line. Yep, yeah, and uh, Sam Day. Look, they're, they're a strong side. No doubt about that. And they've got everyone back and they're coming good. But 
Yeah, what I saw last week against Geelong from the St Kilda side with that, that amount of effort, if, if St Kilda bring the same effort and that same tackling pressure and do to Gold Coast what they did Geelong, if it, if it equalises itself and they do that, Gold Coast is a better side than Geelong. So to me, they can do it. But they're going to have to double or triple team those two big guys down there. Robertson's got to provide a lot of assistance for Delaney and Gilbert. We are sure to Backman Lee will have to go down there. He'll have to start the game down there. So There's only me, one place in Kilda can win the game, and that's where they've won a couple this year, and that's from the palm of Hickey. Yeah, yeah, he, he'll yeah, get, yeah, he will yeah. dominate Nichols, yeah. I reckon, and, yeah. and if they can use it well enough, then um, yeah. maybe Armitage back in his hometown. Yeah. He, he can, he's got a list. St Kilda by a point. Sydney lead the Bulldogs. Now uh, there, in Laidler, out uh, Alir Alir. In comes uh, for the Bulldogs there, Minson, uh, Wood, Smith, the Alhannison, and Webb begins there, and they're getting their team back. Out goes Williams with an E. Campbell and Roberts, uh, Honeychurch and Dunkley. That's young Andrew Dunkley's son. Andrew Dunkley's young son. And uh, Peter, which that's Sydney. Sydney will be too good. They'll, Sid- win. They'll win. Sydney will win. They're pretty close to Premiership favourites for me. Tori? Yeah, I uh, as much as I love the Bulldogs, I think uh, I think Sydney should uh, get the job done by five to six goals. Mark? Don't score enough, the Doggies, and no. don't score more against the best defensive team of the lot, Sydney. So, uh, Sydney. Sydney will uh, tell, and uh, they're just too big, strong and tough. And you're right, Bulldogs, they got, are they 15th for uh, full, forward scores in the game? Not too sure, something like that. Carlton v Collingwood. And there, Carlton, MCG, in Sylvania, young Sylvania there, third generation. Out goes Tut. In comes Goldsack and Moore for Collingwood. Another couple of tall guys. Moore in particular echoes Mask with a calf and White this time. Drop, not Cloak. Peter. So Cloak's playing, is he? Cloak's playing. Well, I'll go for Carlton. <laughs> but, uh, great. That's a facetious yeah. remark, isn't it? Oh, I don't rate him. You know that. Not a fan. Still a pretty Overpaid. Player. Overpaid. And, uh, he's on less money now. No, he's not. He's on. Yeah, he's on the three fifty. They reckon. On, no, he no, he's on, a, no. He got it was it was top ended at the start. Anyway. It was top ended. But look, uh, this will, this will be a tight game. Great to see Silvani playing. But I'll, I'll just roll the dice on that one, Carlton. Roll the dice. Yep, Carlton for mine. Yeah, Jim, Carl, Carlton Detroit. for mine, Peaky. And Mark, anything to add there? Doesn't matter as long as there are no survivors. <laughs> Likes to see them just get stuck in each other. Melbourne, the Adelaide, Melbourne. In Grimes, Gullet, Mitchie, Jones and Hans. Out goes Wagner with an Ian Oliver and in for Adelaide, Otten, Henderson, Malera, Peter. Melbourne v Adelaide. Melbourne. Oh, Melbourne, my uh, second team now. With all of my family and, uh, yeah. and then Alex's uh, friend there is a big Melbourne supporter. So always got a soft spot for them. I think they could do the business at home. Uh, Potroy? Yeah, I can't agree with you there, Coco. Adelaide are in... Red hot form at the moment, so Adelaide by six to eight goals. I'll be slightly off key warblings of Phil Hill suggest time is up, so I'll just lump for Adelaide. (laughs) I reckon Adelaide for sure, they've they've got a good goal to goal line, good side. Melbourne won't be experienced enough for them and Adelaide for mine. And uh, now we're straight into the music here, and we'll do the, uh, we'll go the music first, do our our completions at the finish, and Mr. Phil Hill with Come a Chameleon. Presidents come and go, presidents come and go, whoa, loving would be easy if your colours were like my team, black and white's my dream, black and white's my dream. Uh, thank you to Mark Vine, Troy Zantuck, Peter Kokotis. Bill Hill and the great Stephen J. Peak. So from all of us at the Gladiators of Sport, we'll hopefully be here next week with less babies crying, less people walking in front of the camera, and hopefully more banter and a better song. Presidents come and go. Presidents come and go. 
Yeah. Why do we get panelists? Say so you like that. <laughs> Loving would be easy if your colors were like my team. Black and white's my team. Black and white's my dream. Presidents come and go, presidents come and go, oh ho. Things would be easy if your colors were like my team. Black and white is my dream. Black and white is my dream. I want to thank my clients for coming along today from 1160 this year and along with Peter Kikotis, Troy Zantuck, Yours truly, Mr. Philip Mance, directing a great show, show number 14. See you again in a week's time. On behalf of Alan Mance Boulders, here we are down at Yellow Door, Breakfast and Brunch Eatery in Ricardo's Pretoria in Albert Park. Gladiators of Sport YouTube, show 40. Go, and we come.